What's up, folks? Welcome back to AP Unfiltered. Listen, in today's episode, we're going to go over a new release from the Methodist Church of Great Britain, who's not too happy about using the terms husband and wife anymore. This is AP Unfiltered. Let's get into it. From Breitbart, the Methodist Church of Great Britain labels terms husband and wife offensive. The Methodist Church of Great Britain has called on its ministers, deacons, and elders to stop using offensive terminology such as husband and wife to avoid making assumptions that are not the reality for many people. The church added the changes to its, quote, inclusive language guide, an initiative aimed at preventing the use of hurtful language directed at groups the Methodist church believes have been marginalized and or demonized by common culture. The church plans to update the inclusive language guide every six months to avoid using language that could offend groups it perceives as marginalized. I liked right off the bat they're talking about, oh, this is not the reality for many people. Well, okay, well then what is the reality for many people? I feel like we're now living in this, and we talk about this a lot, people living in Looney Tune land. The left has stripped away and continues to strip away and chip away at the foundation of what every normal thing is in this world. And this is designed to just confuse people further. We talk about this a lot. And this is evidenced by the fact it says right here, the church plans on updating the inclusive language guide every six months. Well, if you're going to update it every six months, how is anybody ever supposed to learn what they're supposed to abide by? This is an ever, they're always moving the benchmark. I remember a while back when they said, oh, and people were getting slammed up and uh, up and down the street on the right for saying that gay marriage was a slippery slope. But I mean, by all available evidence, is, is, were they wrong? We very quickly went from gay marriage to pronouns, to puberty blockers, to affirm your children in a very short window. The church wants its leaders to begin using terms such as partner, child, and parent as a way of recognizing that, quote, relationships come in varied expressions. The guidance specifically addressed the issue of gender identity as well, saying, quote, using a person's chosen pronouns is helpful as it honors their identity. The church also cautioned followers against using, quote, language such as brothers and sisters while intended to be inclusive and friendly. Doesn't take into account our non-binary friends. Congregants are also encouraged to use their pronouns when conversing in everyday life. That just seems to be a headache if you have to go around always saying your pronouns to people. And should their flock need any additional guidance when it comes to pronoun use or the latest approved language aimed at preventing offensive to marginalized LGBT groups, the church directs its members to consult radical leftist groups such as GLAD and Stonewall, the Christian Institute reports. The radical language guidance from the governing body of Great Britain's Methodist community follows even more radical actions from 2021 when the organization voted by an overwhelming margin to redefine marriage and officiate same-sex weddings. So let's break this down. They don't want the terms husband, wife, brother, sister used anymore. That makes for a very confusing world. And they want to swap it in for partner, child, and parent. They don't want brother, sister, husband. And husband and wife apparently is very demeaning, even though in the Bible it talks about how people should be consecrated to one another. But remember, folks, in the name of inclusivity, we must abandon all rationale. And that's ultimately what it is. We are abandoning rationale as a society, and we are allowing our institutions, who sadly have been co-opted by the left and leftist ideology, to run the show. I talked to a lot of people today on the left side of the aisle who consider themselves Christians as well, who state emphatically that Jesus— would be accepting of all of these different sorts of lifestyles. To me, I could clearly see that they have not read the Bible as thoroughly as maybe they front that they do. There is the phrase I keep coming back to of love the sinner, hate the sin. I have no issue whatsoever with people who are in this demographic. I have an issue with it, as you guys know who have watched the channel, when they push their ideas on children. I think that is not what you are supposed to tolerate. The problem becomes is that they want everybody to abide by what they want. They want society to conform to them rather than them have to conform to society. And confirmation to society doesn't necessarily mean you have to give up your lifestyle. That Those two things are not mutually exclusive. But a lot of Christians hide behind this nowadays, this notion that Jesus would be accepting of all of this that is going on with gender ideology and so on, when in reality, you love the sinner, hate the sin if you consider yourself a Christian— but we've been overcome 
with this, I feel good, this is an emotional driven topic, when people abandon their rationale, like I said, and people just go with what their heart is trying to tell them. And ultimately, one thing that is vital to mention, the heart can lead you to some dangerous, dangerous places. A simple test for this is doing the right thing doesn't always feel good. But getting back to the church, people part and parcel almost everything nowadays, and not just religion, but in the, especially within the church, I feel like people choose what they want, they disregard the rest, and ultimately they throw out the baby with the bathwater because most of these people who consider themselves Christians tend to leave traditional Christianity because of what their emotions are dictating to them based on what they are hearing from the modern left. And why do I say this? Because the left encourages people to pursue what makes them feel good above all else, not what is right and what is just. The left is the party of feel good. More, 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 more. It's the same with an addict. More, 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 more. Self-indulgent, high self-esteem, self-centeredness. And it makes 100... I'm not surprised, folks, when I see these stories. Yes, it hurts my heart a lot of the time. It makes me not feel good myself. But as much as I hate to see these things, I'm not surprised by it. If we allow our emotions to run our lives we're going to be in a very bad place at a rapid pace. And guess what? The left is good with that. As I say over and over and over again, the left sows dissent. They sow confusion. The best way to control a population is get them confused and begging for a God. But wait, they already edged God out of society. So who, who replaces that? Sad to say, a lot of people look at big daddy government as a replacement for God these days and social benefits. But listen, folks, that's all I got for you today. If you enjoyed this type of content, hit the like button on the video, hit the follow button on the channel, the sub button if you're over on YouTube, and share the show with a friend. I cannot begin to explain how important it is to share the show with a friend. Pick an episode if you didn't like this episode. But until next time, catch y'all in the next one.